We take them for granted. We can drive by them on a daily basis and most of the time not even realize that they're there. How important are trees? What do they do? Why were they created? What, for what purpose? Does scripture speak about trees? The first three chapters in Genesis speak of the creation of trees. Gives them their purpose to provide food. It's even come to the understanding that trees, they harness the sun's energy using it to put carbon dioxide gas together with water to produce oxygen, this process of photosynthesis. A tree was used in the story of man when sin entered the world, when, when man ate the forbidden fruit. The very first psalm speaks of a tree it reads like this in Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand on the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Other psalms speak of trees. Psalm 52, 8 says, But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. Psalm 92, 12, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Jesus used trees as a metaphor multiple times to teach us a kingdom principle. One such principle is how to identify false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but are inwardly ravenous wolves. Following this statement, Jesus goes on to say how we will know a false prophet by using the illustration of a tree. It reads like this in Matthew chapter 7 verses 16 through 20. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You'll know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. In this story, Jesus used a fruit tree to illustrate how to determine if someone, an influencer of people, whether they are true or false. This is also a clue how God uses trees in dreams. Jesus again used a tree to illustrate a point in John chapter 15 when he speaks about the need for abiding in him, bearing fruit, and the need for pruning so we can bear more fruit. Proverbs 3.18 tells us that to gain wisdom and understanding in God's word is a tree of life. In Psalm 1, verse 3, we are told to be like trees planted by streams of water that yield their fruit in season. In each of these scriptural references, we see how God used trees in a literal and a symbolic way. The symbolism speaks of maturity, growth, influence, and leadership. It should come as no surprise that God will also use a tree to make illustrations and points in our dreams. And therein lies the spiritual riddle and enigma of trees in dreams, and is the topic we will shine light on in today's episode of Simple Faith, Simple Life, 
What does the symbol of a tree mean in our dreams? Let's say you had a dream where a storm came and you were, let's say, in a forest of trees and the storm came, tornado came through, and when all was said and done, the trees were laid over with the roots exposed in the air. What in the world could that mean? In dream language that God uses, these night parables, what in the world could that mean? What would a tree mean in a dream? So, like everything else, we go to Scripture for understanding. The Scripture, the, the Bible, is full of the ways of God, of how He speaks in this parabolic language. And that's what a dream is, a night parable. And so, from it, we can gain understanding of how did God use trees in dreams? Did He speak in a metaphorical way uh, in Scripture using trees? The answer is yes. The scripture is full how God used trees to represent leaders, people of influence, growing to maturity, oaks of righteousness. You know, what is an oak of righteousness? It's a mature tree. God has called his children to be oaks of righteousness. So the scripture is full of examples of God using trees to represent that maturity, leadership, influencers, and so forth. So I'm going to speak on a couple of examples. In Ezekiel chapter 31 is a great example. So in it, it speaks of Egypt and Pharaoh and what God is going to do back in those days during that time. So in chapter 31, verse 1, Now it came to pass in the eleventh year... In the third month, on the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, me being Ezekiel, Son of man, say to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude, Whom are you like in your greatness? Indeed, Assyria was a cedar in Lebanon with fine branches that shaded the forest and of high stature, and its top was among the thick boughs. The waters made it grow. Underground waters gave it height, with the rivers running around the place where it was planted and sent out rivulets to all the trees of the field. So here, God is using a tree to signify Pharaoh and Egypt. And it goes through and describes the tree and the trees of the forest and all these things. And then the very last verses, verse 18 in chapter 31. To which of the trees in Eden will you then be likened in glory and greatness? Yet you shall be brought down with the trees of Eden to the depths of the earth. You shall lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with those slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, says the Lord God. So the Lord, in a metaphor, used an incredibly large tree and the trees of the forest and them being cut down or, or coming down, being brought down. So here we can see how God used a tree for leadership. It can be used... Uh, for a leader of a nation or a nation in our dreams. So another example is Daniel chapter 4. Very familiar. In this dream, Nebuchadnezzar was so shaken, again, he called the wise men, what he quote unquote his wise men, the, the, the astrologers of the day, the psychics of the day, the soothsayers, the Chaldeans, the magicians, the palm readers, those types called him in, told him the dream this time, not like in, in Daniel chapter 2 when he said, tell me my dream and its interpretation. This time he tells them the dream, but none of them could give the interpretation of the dream. So then it, <clears throat> the scripture says, 
that he called in Daniel. Finally, Daniel's here. The, because the spirit of the living God is in him, the scripture says. And so Nebuchadnezzar told Daniel the dream. And, it, and the scripture says, I was looking. The focus is of dreams for a moment. In this particular dream, Nebuchadnezzar was looking. He was watching. That speaks of an external dream. Something other than Nebuchadnezzar being the focus. We see this in Daniel 2.31 where he says, You, O king, were watching and behold a great image. That's the dream where Nebuchadnezzar saw the statue. You were watching. The dream was about what Nebuchadnezzar was watching. So what you watch in a dream, what you're looking at, what you're observing is what the dream is about. So you might be in a dream and even be in a crowd of people, but you're watching something. The people won't even know that you're there. They won't be observing you. They won't be participating with you. They, they won't probably even know that you're there, but you're observing something. You're watching something, like in this Daniel 2.31, where he says, You, O king, were watching, and behold, a great image. You were watching this great image. In Daniel 4, where he is, Nebuchadnezzar is looking at the tree, it says, when Nebuchadnezzar was explaining to Daniel, I was looking, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth. I was looking, I was watching, I was observing. The dream was about the tree. Now, in this circumstance, the tree ended up being Nebuchadnezzar, a great leader over all the earth. And... Uh, so what you're observing, what you're watching, what you are looking at in a dream is, is the focus of the dream. Now, with observing and watching and looking in a dream, you might be in the crowd or you might be at a slightly elevated level. I remember one time I was in a dream and, and I was in this room and I was watching this child have a dream. I was actually watching her have her dream. And I was at a slightly elevated position looking down. So I was observing. So the dream was about what I was observing. It might be that you're, that you're observing, you're at a very elevated level. Let's say that there's something going to happen at the chief stadium. And, and you're in a dream where you are over the stadium looking down into it. And you're being shown something. You're seeing something. The dream is about what you're being shown or, or observing or looking at. Genesis 41 with Pharaoh. He was by this river and suddenly seven fat cows came out. And then again, suddenly seven skinny and gaunt cows came out. Suddenly this happened. He was watching and the cows came out of the river. So the dream wasn't about Pharaoh, it was about what God was showing him about a famine coming in, in all of Egypt. More on that later. So you can be observing in a, in a dream and what you're observing is what the dream is about. But how do you know if the dream is about you or not? If you are the focus of the dream. In dreams, which will be most of your dreams, the majority of your dreams, everything is happening around you. Everything, everybody is coming up to greet you. Everybody's shaking your hand. The encounters that you have, it's swirled around you. Think of it like this. You're, there's a movie camera in the dream. What is the movie camera zooming in on? Who is the main character? Or what is the main character in your dream? Uh, to where if that person or that thing is removed from the dream, the dream would fall apart and make no sense at all. So where the dreams that you have, where everything is happening around you, you are the focus of the dream. So you have you as the main focus. You have times when you might be observing or watching or looking at something is the main focus. Or you could be participating in a dream. That is where you're in a group activity and the dream isn't necessarily about you, focus on what you're doing, but what the group is doing. That could lead into something where the group is participating in something 
and the outflow of that, all of a sudden you become the focus of the dream. So it could go from participating with a group and then the, the output of what the group did uh, suddenly turns to you doing something, some sort of ministry or vocation or something. So, so with dreams, it could go from participating to the main focus, even to observing. It could switch all around. So understanding what the focus is of a dream is essential to understand what God might be speaking to I was, you. I saw this tree this great tree. It was enormous and the birds of the air nested and it covered the whole earth and so on. And Daniel goes on to say, after some time, Nebuchadnezzar, you are this tree. So God used again a tree to signify a leader in the nation, an influencer, uh, a leader of people. And so we see this precedence in our own dreams. So in the dream I mentioned before that, that you might, for an example, you're in a forest and a storm came or tornado came. And after the, the aftermath of the tornado, the trees were all laid over and the root systems were exposed. What that speaks of is there's a storm coming. And after the, after the storm passes through, those whose roots don't go deep in God will be laid over. So what that dream is signifying that our roots have to go deep in Jesus. Our roots have to go deep in Him. Because when the winds of adversity come, if our roots aren't in Him, we'll be laid over. He is our foundation and He is our strength. Our roots have to go deep in Him. So what that dream would signify that the leaders, if, you, if, if you're taking, uh, if you're getting your foundation in your ministry, if you're getting your foundation out of politics, out of anything other than your roots going deep in God in relationship with Him through His Son Jesus, you're going to be laid over just as I would be, just as, as my family and our friends and so forth. Our roots have to go deep in Jesus. So trees in dreams, they're, they're amazing. God uses these metaphors, these symbols, and we would do well to understand the mysterious way that God speaks. In he's, Job 33, 14 through 18 says that He speaks in many ways, and yet man does not perceive it. We would do well to gain understanding of this incredible God that we serve and the ways that He speaks, this, this hidden, deep and secret language that God uses in dreams. Scripture is full of it. So, in the dream scenario that I gave, a storm came, whether it's a tornado or a hurricane, high winds, whatever it was. How do we know when the storms come if they're from God? And He does bring storms. He brings whirlwinds. Scripture is full of it. How do we know if, if it's from God or from the evil one, the enemy? I think sometimes we get mistaken about that. But there are clear insights of what's from God and what's from the enemy. But that, dear friends, is something that we'll have to shine light on on another episode of Simple Faith, Simple Life. Father, your word says in Daniel 2.22 that you are the revealer of the hidden and the secret things. You know what's in the darkness and light dwells with you. Father, I pray that you would manifest your light in the darkness. God, those things that we can't see that's ahead of us that we can't perceive or understand. Father, that you would manifest your light in the darkness and that you give us understanding and wisdom and revelation, God. Father, when you speak to us in dreams, that you would give us wisdom and, and understanding of the symbols and the metaphor and the, the parables, God, this parabolical language that you use. Father, apart from your spirit, we don't have insight. We don't know, God. 
So I pray, Father, I pray for myself and my wife and my children and grandchildren. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ and those that don't know you, Father. I pray that you give each person the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, God, that you would speak to them in dreams. Father, Acts chapter 2, God, Joel chapter 2 says that in the last days you'll pour out your spirit on all flesh, that there will be an increase of prophetic revelation for sons and daughters. God, that there would be an increase of dreams and visions. Father, we need understanding of the ways that you speak. When you give us a dream, God, that you would help us to understand, Father, the things that you're saying, God. Father, I pray this in Jesus' name. May your name be magnified. May the name of Jesus be magnified, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.